Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to, to be here speaking uh, to you. So I'm going to talk about uh, some opportunities of wastewater reuse in Baja California. Uh, probably you already know uh, uh, some of this data, but I hope uh, you don't because things have been changing quite uh, fast sometimes. Well, as an introduction, I mean, you already know that water quality and the way that we can reuse wastewater depends on the type of treatment that we provide. So if we start with raw wastewater, then we treat it well and it goes up to drinking water level. And once we use it, it goes to uh, wastewater, T turns into wastewater. And we already can reuse wastewater without uh, any treatment, although if we do provide secondary treatment, then we can use it for, for some things. And if we, if we use it, if we make a tertiary treatment, then we can use it for, uh, for things that are more um, um, uh, health-related, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, of importance. But then we can ha have even an advanced treatment, which basically uh, depends on membranes. And with that, you can obtain water that is really, really of high quality, even sometimes higher than raw water, uh, natural water, or it's compatible even to drinking water. So we have to stop, uh, you know, worrying about um, the quality of wastewater because we have the technology. Obviously, the more we treat it, the, the most expensive it becomes. Um, as, as, as Mr. Gibson said, um, the amount of water we use in California is really, uh, is really high and in the, in the whole world, uh, you can't even say that it's an example of things. Like these, da this data is from 2009 and it says that most of the water uh, reuse in California goes through agriculture irrigation and then follows by, followed by landscape irrigation, groundwater recharge. So if we share these um, you know, uh, similar things, I think that in Baja California, we can also uh, manage our wastewater similarly uh, to you guys. And this is uh, the plan um, in the year 2013 in which um, the, uh, the state already had the idea to, to reuse water in Tijuana, in Tecate, Mexicali, and there's some small, some data here, here at the, at the bottom. Okay, so this is the plan, plan for year 2035, okay? So already the state is considering uh, the reuse of wastewater in the main cities of Baja California. And I'm going to go through uh, what is happening at the moment. Wastewater reuse in Mexicali. Mexicali, as you know, is the capital of the, of the state. And 250 liters per second, I'm sorry about the units, but I mean, I had to, to work with, um, <laughs> with, with the ones that I'm familiar with. Um, 250 liters per second of untreated wastewater are used for the generation of electricity. And electricity that is, that is being used in Mexicali, but also is being exported to the US. That increased in 2002 uh, to 900 liters per second. But remember, this is untreated uh, wastewater. And in 2005, a, a small wastewater treatment plant with a capacity of only 15 liters per second was um, to provide tertiary treatment was built for the use of wastewater in irrigation of landscapes and industrial parks. The wastewater reuse opportunities in Mexicali that I, um, that I consider is aquifer recharge. There's a neighboring city in, um, in, in, in Mexicali, it's east of Mexicali, it's called San Mirio Colorado in the state of Sonora, and it's the only Mexican city that practices aquifer recharge. And actually, um, researchers from UABC, and, and, and here's uh, Jorge Ramirez and his team, uh, did the, 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 the studies to demonstrate that infiltration was possible in that area. So um, the same can happen in, in Mexicali. I mean, you, we have a lot of desert, we have a lot of space. It's not a problem of that. We could really use infiltration basins there to recharge the, um, the, the aquifer, the local aquifer. And the other thing is that we could substitute white water or, un or underground water, groundwater 
with reclaimed water for crop production. Sometimes you don't really need a very high quality uh, water for irrigation, for example, of cotton. We could use, uh, let's say, primary tre treated or secondary treated uh, wastewater for, for this. In Ensenada, Ensenada uh, is located uh, 150 roughly kilometers south of the border, and we have problems because we can only, we, we rely on groundwater from the Valle Guadalupe and from Maneadero uh, Valley, which are uh, agriculture valleys. And we already knew there was, there was going to be a deficit since 2012 and even earlier. This deficit was going to be covered by a desalination plant, which took a lot to be built, but finally it started working uh, last year. Supplies approximately, it, it's built for 250 liters per second, but it supplies only like 200. And then from wastewater, I mean water from the, um, from the um, Colorado River Aqueduct and Tijuana. This hasn't been built. The desalination plant has been built, but it's working only, as, as, I, as I say, partially. So we are in a deep um, scarcity in the region. One of the things that uh, CESPE did was to provide less water uh, per capita. So instead of a consumption of 220 liters per person per day, came down to only 180. So that meant that by 2014, we really started to feel that, that, that scarcity, not before. If we compare this uh, water uh, supply to San Diego, well, we're really like half of, of, of what's uh, consumed here or even less. So what happened? A 20 kilometer uh, uh, pipe was built between Ensenada and the south of, of, um, of Ensenada to supply uh, water to Maniadero. However, the um, farmers didn't like uh, the price. They didn't want to pay for that water. So after, uh, only in 2013, after a five year drought, did the farmers agree to receive the water and they're not paying for the water at the moment because they negotiated with, uh, with CESPE. And finally, in June 29, 2014, 200 liters per second of raw water, uh, sorry, reclaimed water uh, and secondary, secondary treated water were um, delivered to Maniadero. It's been delivered to three areas. Uh, this is, these are creeks for infiltration and in this central area, we have a, a crop production these are the, the basins since which the wastewater uh, reaches the valley, and these are like, basically it's just being discharged to the creeks and there is natural infiltration there. So we did a, a research, a, a study from 2015 to 2016, and we saw that the TDS of the reclaimed water is really high, 3,500. I mean, 3,100 milligrams per liter, which is really high. And um, some of the adjacent um, wells presented fecal coliforms, so there is, uh, you know, some um, infiltration of, uh, of uh, untreated uh, wastewater to the, to the local wells. And also nitrogen and phosphorus were enough so that um, these could act as natural fertilizers. 150, so far, 150 hectares of farmland have been reactivated and uh, 1,200 uh, jobs have, have been created with a production of approximately two million USD dollars. Um, however, uh, most of the, the, of the reclaimed water is being discharged to the creeks without any control, really. So we have to be very careful there. And also, there is no official monitoring program um, here. I mean, it's just like th we, we um, CESPE started to do it, and there is no control. So I know that it sounds crazy, but I mean, that's the way it is. Wastewater reuse in Tijuana, what could happen? Well, we have uh, five uh, large wastewater treatment plants. The International Wastewater Treatment Plant, right at the border, the San Antonio de los Buenos or Punta Bandera, uh, that treats both uh, 1,100 liters per second, and then some other more uh, smaller um, uh, wastewater treatment plants at the east. But as everybody knows, um, Punta Banderas has a very low quality effluent. So um, even though officially this is treated water, it's really basically raw sewage, okay? It doesn't, that wastewater treatment plant doesn't work really. Uh, so that's why one of the, uh, the ideas is to provide 
waste, uh, 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 good treatment to the wastewater of Tijuana and send it to Guadalupe Valley at the east of, um, of, of Tijuana. And, but what, what's, what happens with, with uh, the Guadalupe Valley? Well, it's the wine, the, the main wine pro producer in Mexico. I mean, it's small, it doesn't compare to Napa, but it is a very nice place and, and it has a lot of uh, tourism. However, it's water scarcity. There is water scarcity due to over concessions of the wells and there is insufficient natural recharge. So everybody tells us, why don't you reuse the wastewater like Napa reuses wastewater, okay? So yeah, the government officials go to Napa, okay, you know, free trip to see how they reuse over there, and it's nothing spectacular, okay? They have a good wastewater treatment plant, they have good, um, good uh, programs there. And if we compare the irrig irrigation plants of Napa and Tijuana, we can see, for example, that salinity, in Napa, it's less than 600 milligrams per liter, while in Tijuana, it's more than 1,500, okay? So there's a problem straight away. Is there a strategic plan for reclaimed water management? Well, yes, in Napa, they, they, they elaborated one in 2005 with a 220 projection, and in Tijuana, it doesn't exist. I feel uh, like are there reclaimed water reports? Yes, in Napa, you can see them online, monthly, or almost daily, and in Tijuana, there are no available. Is there a user manual for reclaimed water management? Yes, in Napa they have one, but in Tijuana they don't. Price per cubic meter, um, one dollar per 1,000 gallons, which is like seven pesos per cubic meter. And in Tijuana, <coughs> initially it was, it w the plan was to have four pesos, to, to charge four pesos per, um, per cubic meter, but now it went up to 11 and currently is more than 13 pesos per, cu per cubic meter. The amount, but to be honest, the amount of, of reclaimed water used for uh, vineyard irrigation in Napa is not really that high. I mean, if we convert to, if we make the conversions between milligrams, I mean, million gallons per day to million cubic meters per year, it results in only 2.67 million cubic meters per year, which 49% goes to golf course irrigation. Um, according to Napa's own statistics, and only 16% is used for vineyard irrigation, okay? Which represents only 14 liters per second, okay? So it's really small. And the plan is to send 1,000 liters per second to, for irrigation in Guadalupe, okay? So we're going to have this monster project, okay? Without really the uh, basic, you know, uh, information and, 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 and the important programs and monitoring programs and control programs and all of this that we need in order to, to make such a, such a big um, uh, project work. And one more thing, remember salinity? Salinity is high, so we really need to bring down that salinity from, from Tijuana, okay, so Really, salinity can only be removed with RO or with um, electrodialysis, which is really expensive. However, the company that won the contract, because this has already been won, uh, is, is, is planning to use, I think, electrodialysis. But if electrodialysis and RO remove practically everything and pure water is obtained, then why not consider, just like here in California, indirect potable reuse? Instead of sending it all the way to Napa, I mean, not to Napa, <laughs> to, to Guadalupe, why not send it to the reservoirs uh, Abelardo Rodriguez or Emilio Lopez Zamora and Ensenada? That would be really a more, you know, um, I don't know, proper way to, to, um, to, to manage that uh, reclaimed water. Okay, so in conclusion, responsible reclaimed water reuse requires a permanent and reliable monitoring program easily available results, clear contingency plans, willingness to pay also for the reclaimed water, otherwise it doesn't make sense, take into consideration all stakeholders and very important clarity in decision, in decision making. And the decisions have to be based on technical and scientific data and not on political interest, which unfortunately, you know, it dominates at least in, in Mexico. The other thing is that there is a lack of long-term planning. I mean, we see the plans always here in California. They are like 
2035, 2040, and things like that. And in, in Baja California, the previous governor didn't even manage to publish the state water plan, okay? In six years, he didn't manage to publish it. So we don't have a short-term version, we don't have a medium-term uh, vision, and obviously we don't have a long-term vision, which is what we need if we really want to solve the, the problem of um, the water management here in Baja California. And just finally, oh, offset seawater desalination. We haven't talked about desalination much, but if we re re reuse reclaimed water, then there is no need for desalination, which is really expensive. And, um, and um, I'm not a fan of it, but I know, I know that sometimes you need it. But if we haven't really solved the problem of wastewater treatment, why are we stepping into desalination plants in Baja California? We really need to attend uh, this as a prior priority. And finally, just a, a thought. Solving the technical scientific <coughs> aspects is easy, but solving the political social aspects takes more time, and I'm sure but we will get there eventually. It only took us 15 years to reach wastewater uh, reuse in Ensenada. I hope that it takes us a little bit uh, less than that to achieve wastewater reuse uh, in the other cities of uh, Baja California. Thank you very much.